We're going to be taking a look at the solutions to problems 11, 12, and 13 on our projectiles launched at angles review. In problem number 11, there's a long jumper competing in the Olympics. The jumper's takeoff speed is 9.5 meters per second, so that's the hypotenuse of our triangle, and the angle of jump is 42 degrees above the horizontal. We're going to find the distance the jumper was able to go, so we're ultimately just looking for that x distance from when they jump. We're going to be able to find the velocity in the x and the velocity in the y using our SOHCAHTOA, or sine and cosine. Velocity in the x, as always, is the adjacent side, so I'm going to use the cosine of my angle 42 degrees, multiplied by my hypotenuse 9.5, to get a velocity in the x of 7.1 meters per second. Should be per second there, a little typo. Initial velocity in the y direction is the opposite side, so that's going to be sine of 42 times 9.5 meters per second, and that's going to get us a velocity in the y of 6.4 meters per second. I can plug that over here into my x and y columns. Velocity in the x, 7.1. Initial velocity in the y, 6.4. To solve for the distance in the x, distance is velocity multiplied by time, but I haven't solved for time yet. I have to get this time, and I can do that using the y direction stuff. Displacement in the y direction is zero because you start on the ground and land on the ground, and we know acceleration is negative 9.8. Using the third equation, and I will use the quadratic formula for this to solve for time, so that would be negative v naught plus or minus square root of v naught squared plus 2ad divided by a. Plugging in my numbers, negative 6.4 plus or minus a square root of 6.4 squared plus 2 times the acceleration, negative 9.8, times d, which is 0 meters, all divided by negative 9.8. Gives me two possible times, 0 seconds and 1.3 seconds. Because the person did not jump and get over to where they land in no time at all, 1.3 seconds is the time we're going to use. Going over here into our x direction, d equals v times t, velocity 7.1, which we solved at the beginning of the problem, multiplied by time 1.3 seconds, gets us a total distance traveled of 9.2 meters. Number 12. A stone is thrown horizontally from a cliff. So I know that this is projectiles launched at angles, but every once in a while we want to throw in a little review of the stuff we did before. So the, thrown, the stone is thrown horizontally from a cliff, which is 50 meters high, so our displacement in the y is going to be negative 50 meters. And we are going to ask, what velocity does the, does, does the stone have when it strikes the ground? We know that we throw it with a speed of 80 meters per second, so all that speed is going to be in the x direction. Initial velocity in the y is zero because it is horizontally thrown. Acceleration, negative 9.8 meters per second squared. In order to solve for the velocity when it gets to the ground, we're going to need the x component of velocity, which we already know is 80, and that does not change. And now we just need the final velocity in the y direction, which we can get using this fourth equation, vf squared equals v naught squared plus 2ad. We have v naught is 0, we have a, negative 9.8, we have d, negative 50. So since v naught squared is just 0, we can cancel that one out, we plug in our numbers, and we just get the square root of 2 times the acceleration, negative 9.8, times d, negative 50, to get us final velocity in the y of negative 31.3 meters per second. So our velocity components when this thing gets to the ground in the x direction is 80, and in the y direction down negative 31.3. Finally, number 13, a ball is thrown with a velocity of 25 meters per second at an angle of 40 degrees above the horizontal. So there's my angle 40 and my hypotenuse 25 meters per second. Where is it and what is the velocity when it reaches the peak of its flight? So we're looking for a maximum height situation. The velocity in the x direction we're going to solve for, that's the adjacent side of our triangle, so we're going to get cosine of 40 degrees times the hypotenuse 25 meters per second to get a velocity in the x of 19.2 meters per second. In the y direction, it's the opposite side, so we're going to use sine of 40 times 25 meters per second, telling my initial velocity in the y is 16.1 meters per second. Once we plug our numbers into our column, we do not know the displacement in the x, but that's one of the things we're trying to find. We want to know where is this thing when it gets to its highest point, so how far in the x and how far in the y. And the question also asked, what's the velocity when it gets here? Since the x velocity never ever changes at any point in time through the flight, we know the x velocity here is going to be 19.2 meters per second. And you can see we wrote that down here, our final velocity in the x is 19.2 meters per second. And we should know in our givens that final velocity is zero in the y direction at the maximum height. So our velocity in the y at the maximum height is zero meters per second. Now we need to solve for the location. 
which is displacement in the X, and displacement in the Y. We don't have enough information to solve for displacement in the X right away because we would need time. So we're going to be able to solve for time in the Y direction and use it in the X. The first thing we did though is solve for displacement in the Y because that is something that we want. We have V naught, 16.1. We have final velocity, zero. We have acceleration, negative 9.8. So we can use that fourth equation, VF squared equals V naught squared plus 2AD. And we're going to rearrange that for D. I'm going to subtract V naught squared over, which is why over here we're going to have VF squared minus V naught squared. And then we're going to divide by 2A to get D by itself, which is why 2A is in my denominator. VF is zero, so zero squared is just zero. So minus 16.1 squared divided by two times negative 9.8. Plug that into your calculator and you should get a positive 13.2 meters. So where is this located? We know it's at least 13.2 meters high. Solving for time, we don't have to use the quadratic or anything because we now have the initial velocity, the final velocity, the acceleration, and the distance. So we can use any equation we want to solve for time. I'll use the first one. So VF equals V naught plus AT. Subtract V naught over to the left, and we get VF minus V naught, divide by A, and that's why A is in our denominator. Plug in our numbers, zero minus the initial velocity of 16.1 meters per second, divided by the acceleration negative 9.8, and we get a time of 1.6 seconds for the object to reach that maximum height. Displacement then is gonna be how fast it traveled, 19.2 meters per second, multiplied by the time, 1.6 seconds, plugged that into my calculator, and I know the position of the object, the projectile at this highest point, is 30.7 meters to the right and 13.2 meters up. 